Well, good morning again. You know, sometimes when we go through scary seasons like we're all facing right now, sometimes it's comforting for us to be able to take a look at a section of, of God's word that's familiar to us. And as I think of the whole Bible, I would say perhaps one of the most familiar passages for many of us would, would be Psalm chapter 23. Many of us know Psalm 23. In fact, some of you maybe have memorized it. So I, I'd encourage you to just take your Bibles and, and turn there because I want to I pull some things from Psalm 23 this morning. Now, Psalm 23, it begins by saying, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? And if you know who wrote Psalm 23, you know that the author of Psalm 23 was a man named David. We've talked about him a little bit in these devotionals so far. And David, he was a man who was familiar with shepherding. In fact, he, his job was to be a shepherd. Before he ever became king, David was someone who took care of sheep. That's what he did for a living. And so David, he knows all about what it means to shepherd people. But here in this psalm, David says, even though I'm a shepherd, Lord, you are my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I won't need anything. Then he says, he makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters, right? That, that's, a, that's something that a loving shepherd does for his sheep. He brings them to the best of places so they can graze and feed and rest. And this is what David says the Lord does for him. Now, if you know your Bible, you know that the manifestation of the, this image of God being a shepherd, it's best seen in the New Testament. In John chapter 10, uh, throughout John's gospel, Jesus has numerous points, seven different points where he makes these great I am statements. And one of them is in John chapter 10, and he says, I am the good shepherd. So Jesus is the good shepherd. And then he explains why he's good. He says, because I lay down my life for my sheep. And the truth is Jesus loves us so much, his sheep, that he's willing to die for us. Now, this is interesting. Hang on to that point because we're going to draw from that in a second. Notice now back to Psalm 23, how it continues. David then says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And so the, the truth is here, there are moments in our life where not everything we experience are, are green pastures or still waters. In fact, let me ask you right now, do you feel like life for you right now is green pastures and still waters with all this stuff going on around us? I don't feel that way. I think sometimes life is difficult. Sometimes it, it is for us walking through the valley of the shadow of death. But I, I want to camp out here for a second because if you notice here, David doesn't say, even though I walk through the valley of death, he says, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now, I think this is something we can, we can hang on to for a second because the truth is, for you and I, if we're a follower of Jesus, death in its full substance, we don't experience in fact, we have amazing news. The good shepherd, he lays down his life for a sheep. Why did Jesus lay down his life for us? Well, the reason Jesus laid down his life is because through our sin, we had this penalty, which was death. And death was eternal separation from God. But Jesus, he took our place on the cross. He died in our place. He absorbed death itself, right? The sting of death, he absorbed all that into himself. And then Jesus rose from the dead in victory. In fact, if we read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says some amazing things. It says, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Jesus defeated death itself through his resurrection. And at the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, therefore death is swallowed up in victory. De death, it says, where's your victory? Where's your sting? No, Jesus conquered death itself. Now, this is what's awesome for us is because Jesus conquered death, we don't have to face the valley of death. We only need to face the valley of the shadow of death. Now, a shadow, that's not a substance in and of itself. It just points to the substance. If, if there was light that was shining on me, it would cast a shadow. And the shadow is nothing to be afraid of because it's merely a shadow. And the same thing is true with death. If we're a Christian, if we're a follower of Jesus, and death has lost its sting. We need not fear of the world and everything that's going around. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we can take comfort because it's merely a shadow. Jesus faced the valley of death for us, so all we experience is the shadow. And this is why now David can say this. He says, therefore, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You're the one who died in my place. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And so this morning, if you're feeling a little concerned with everything going around, just know, just know that Jesus has won the victory for us. He's defeated and conquered death. And so even though we, we face scary things around us, all we truly face is the shadow of death.